overpriced, late, unsafe and rude. What Air Canada does here is to jeopardize the safety of its crew and of the passengers. If you know Air Canada, you probably haven't heard very positive things. A flight delay and flight cancellation turned into an absolute this disaster. Fault, and... But we're gonna treat you like it's yours. Air Canada! But how bad is Air Canada really? Well, I wanted to find out for myself. Join Pachari and me on a surprising four and a half hour flight from Vancouver, BC to Toronto. Beautiful good afternoon from Vancouver. Today we are going to try out Air Canada. Uh, we are already checked in, went through security. I'm really looking forward to the flight. Currently, Vancouver Airport does not feature any lounges that can be accessed by priority pass. Since our flight has been delayed, we still have some time to kill. I'm quite excited for this flight since I've heard uh, many stories about Air Canada regarding the camera. Like other YouTubers said that they don't really appreciate the camera. With a delay of about 30 minutes, it's announced that our 777 to Toronto is ready for boarding. Boarding is organized in zones and proceeds in a very orderly manner. Welcome to the 7-year-old 777-300ER. Our seats today are 40K and 40J. My first impression is actually a lot better than I have expected. The cabin looks modern, the seat is clean and features an adjustable headrest. We have an in-flight entertainment system and the crew seems nice. The only things that could be better so far are the punctuality and the legroom. The flight seems to be fully booked and as we spend some time on the tarmac, it starts to get quite hot in the cabin. Your procedures video? At this time, many headsets that are connected to a personal electronic. Also, I discovered that there are no headphones for the in flight entertainment. However, it's possible to purchase two different models of headphones through the IFE. I love the safety video of Air Canada. However, after the video is over, the crew fails to prepare the cabin for takeoff. Some seats are still reclined, and most surprisingly of all, one of the overhead bins is still open during takeoff. After takeoff, we start to climb over the Rocky Mountains and cross into the United States. To my surprise, the crew actually hands out free biodegradable headphones. As the dinner service is about to commence, I realize that food and drinks are not included. This quite strikes me, since Air Canada is not a budget carrier. As the flag carrier of Canada, Air Canada brands themselves as a premium carrier, which is also reflected in the steep airfares. Since luggage is also not included, I ask myself why I should fly Air Canada instead of a budget airlines and pay three times as much just to fly on a so-called premium airlines. Good, so the inclusive sign. The only thing we are being served is a cup of water. However, I like that the plane is equipped with Wi-Fi and the prices for that are not too steep. Another thing that I enjoy are the mood lights which change color during sunset. Before it gets too dark in the cabin, I head to the back of the plane to check out the lavatory. We will never open the toilet because it's not clean. Uh, there is one shape, 
Okay. Of the red I spend my time watching some movies. The in-flight entertainment offers a wide range of movies, TV shows, music and more. However, it is a bit unresponsive sometimes. As we are getting closer to Toronto, the captain has made up for most of the delay. The descent is beautiful and I am waiting for the cabin crew to turn off the lights to properly record the landing. It is a standard procedure in aviation to dim the cabin lights during landing and takeoff. The reason for that is so that your eyes can adjust to the darkness. If something happens and the plane has to be evacuated, it is crucial that your eyes are adjusted to the darkness so you can orient yourself and evacuate in time. In case of emergency, the dimmed cabin lights can decide over life or death. That's why it's required for all takeoffs and landings at night. So I am quite shocked that on this flight this is not the case. We are landing with the cabin lights on maximum brightness. Even if this might not seem like a big thing to you, that's actually a serious safety breach. And together with the overhead bin that was open during the takeoff, this shows me that Air Canada is not really serious about the safety during landing and takeoffs. Nevertheless, I don't want to complain too much as we touch down safely in Toronto. What Air Canada does here is to jeopardize the safety of its crew and of the passengers and it's actually an international standard that airlines will dim down the, the cabin lights and also while landing some of the window shades were closed um, and that's not really how it should be, it's actually quite dangerous. Like, uh, the reason that they dim the cabin light is that your eye can adjust to the surroundings so if there's an evacuation um, it's easier for you to see your surroundings and to spot the uh, like potential fires or uh, other uh, hazards. So what they're doing by not dimming the cabin light is actually um, jeopardizing a possible evacuation if it's needed. So now of course the question arises of how bad Air Canada actually is. And I would say um, they're pretty bad actually. Um, I mean considering the two safety breaches like the window shades and the light, also the delay, and the price, but they're not the worst. Uh, I like the in-fat entertainment, some of the crew were nice uh, and also the seat was quite comfortable. Yeah, but that's it for today. Um, if you're interested in other videos uh, about how bad of my how bad series, uh, check out uh, how bad Air Asia release or how bad Thai Smile release. Otherwise, thanks for watching and see you next week.